Jesus! What are you doing, Step Rob? You are thank you, ladies. You oh. appreciate that, thank you. Hey, babe. Hi, babe. Ooh. It's chilly out here today. Hey everyone, what's up? It's uh, it's me, Santa. Nope, Santa's white. <laughs> I'm nobody. I'm just a guy with a Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer ugly sweatshirt. Because I am in the Christmas spirit. And I hope you guys are too. Wherever you are, whatever holiday that you celebrate, happy everything. Sit down, have a glass of eggnog or anything. <laughs> Prepare for today's tradition, which I am now making it official. Whoever is sitting here watching this video right now, you have officially been invited to my holiday tradition of watching horrible Hallmark movies on the Christmas holidays. I don't know if you know about Hallmark movies, but they are some of the best worst movies in the world and around Christmas time, they just up their game. It's like the Avengers of shit. Hallmark are those cards that when you forget to tell your mom that she's your mother on Mother's Day, you just get a Hallmark card and you know, you open it and it says, oh, happy mother. But she's not that happy because you forgot about it. Anyway, Hallmark saves your ass from that. They also ruin your ass from the movies they make. Today we're going to be looking at possibly, possibly the worst Christmas movie in a long time. It might be the worst Christmas movie of all time, but I think there's enough Hallmark movies that we have to watch many more to debate that. The movie in question today is called Christmas Coupon. A former figure skating champion spends her time offering skating lessons for children. When her childhood sweetheart enrolls his niece for lessons, sparks fly between the two. It seems like an normal plot? It's not. The story is Hallmark quality, the characters are Hallmark people, and the whole movie has a Hallmark presentation about it. Before we start, I want to say that this is a bad movie. Possibly one of the worst. But it's so bad that I like it. Some movies are so bad that they suck when you watch them alone. But in good company, the movies become fun and entertaining. And I'll tell you what, the people who made this movie, I congratulate them. They brought a group of people together to hate on them. That hasn't been done since The Clan. A weird comparison. Anyway, I just wanted to show you what you're in for before we started and read a couple uh, reviews. One star. Awful acting and script. Great start. The acting in this movie makes it really hard to watch. The script is poorly written. So far, so good. One star. Read and believe the one star reviews. The oftentimes painful acting, the problematic script, the costumes, deficiencies, continuity, editing, and other aspects of this presumably well-intentioned effort are indeed cringeworthy. Like fingernails on a chalkboard. One star. I love a good Christmas movie, but this one doesn't even rank as okay. The acting is horrible and the storyline needs a lot of work. I would rather listen to fingernails drug on a chalkboard, but don't take my word for it. Watch it if you can. And watching it is what we're doing today. <laughs> Before we start the video if you want to make this a tradition and subscribe bring your friends along i think it'll be very fun also follow me on instagram at 16leo underscore if you want to say happy merry christmas to me i would appreciate that one thing i forgot to say is that every single time something weird in this movie happens i bought a bunch of candy canes and i'm gonna stick them on me there's gonna be a lot of candy canes on me by the end of the movie a little context before we start, the movie's characters are called Allison and Ivan Hall. You have to say his full name because that's how he introduces himself to everyone. Ivan Hall. Ivan Hall. He might as well have been like, I've been drinking. Like, the characters are so unnatural. It's like watching an NPC movie. Like, all the main characters are removed and there's just NPCs interacting with each other. It's fantastic. Alright, let's slow it down for this next day. All you seniors out there. Sorry, I know we're just starting, but I already got to put one up. He said seniors. High school seniors. Two main characters look like they're high school teachers at best. I, I don't know. You got to hire 18 year olds if you're going to make the scene like a flashback. Please, director. <laughs> but the movie starts off with a flashback to a scene where two lovers are high school sweethearts. And they are dancing at prom to some very fucking depressing music. Teacher's coming up. Why don't you get out of here? Let's do it. Oh, it's so sweet. What the hell holy was that, bro? Ugh. Why does it sound like a man peeing in a bathroom at 3 p.m. after drinking one too many? What? I just started this movie. Why? <sighs> oh, God. Our son. That's right. Forever and ever. Never. The main character plays a song from the 1400s. I would suggest he played Roddy Rich the box if, if she was like, that's my song! Put another whip in a box! <laughs> then I would have been like, all right. But uh, that's some royalty-free music she got on, on her royalty-free radio there. Oh, this is so sweet. Our song. 
not sure how he had the mat already pulled out and like the picnic already set up even though they spontaneously got out of there. I'm gonna be picking plot holes in this very very holy movie and by holy I mean like cheese holy not like Jesus. We uh, skip to 10 years in the future. Presumably they're like 18 before, now they're like 28. Look a lot more like 48, but anyway, now one of the main characters, Ivan Hall, is a champion NHL player. His high school sweetheart is a champion figure skater, even though she can't actually skate. I almost forgot to say, there's an Indian man in this movie. Woo! And his name's Napoleon. Well, not really, his stage name is Napoleon. And I actually looked this man up. He was like the social justice minister for India. There's a guy called Napoleon and he's brown and tall. Like this movie has no shortage of funniness in it. It's not even in the script. That's the real guy. Oh, anyway, this guy plays Ivan Hall's manager and uh, he doesn't really say much, but when he does speak, he is fantastic. What we learn is that Ivan Hall succumbs to an injury from his NHL career. He is then sidelined and forced to reconsider his profession because it's that serious. Allison Grant, do you know how thin the ice is you're on right now? Excuse me? Allison, your skating class isn't bringing in enough revenue. I'm going to have to cancel your class and use that time for an open skate instead. At the same time, Allison is having problems in her hometown because she cannot seem to attract enough people to bring in revenue for her classes, forcing the person who actually owns the place to fire her, basically. I'm gonna put a candy can out for this one for sure. I was watching this and I was like, oh, who's the person at the start skating? She's, she must be the random lady. Then I looked at the clothing on Allison and the random lady, who's obviously a stunt double, and it was supposed to be Allison. They got a stunt double in a movie about skating. Director, casting agent, why didn't you hire two people who could skate? That's like making Baywatch and none of the fucking actors can swim. Why? You can clearly see they're trying to dress her up in the same clothes, but the problem is, I don't know if they were expecting me to be Rai, but I can see the difference between the two white people. I just cannot believe they had a stunt actor to do a scene in a movie about skating where they couldn't get the main characters to skate. Because they're not good at acting. So, I'll try to get more students. You see these bleachers, Allison? They're empty. I'm sorry. She was filling bleaches with her teaching? Maybe I need some bleach. You're on thin ice, motherfucker. I can't believe this. I'm sorry. This is a wafer thin plot, bro. I would have fired her years ago. The main characters live in a small town that Ivan Hall left to be a big superstar NHL player. The diner that all of the main characters seem to own, they do homeless giveaways and food and meal things, and this is what they're doing now. Just running a uh, meal charity. I got some tomato soup for you. There we go. There it is. There's the ADR. Do you guys know what ADR is? Ass dialogue lines. Can I do that one again? Do you know what ADR is? Ass dialogue reading. It actually stands for additional dialogue replacement. But who the fuck cares at this point? This dude didn't even try. Do you like my tomato soup? Nice. Original recipe. Merry Christmas, my friend. Bitch had the nerve to say it's my homemade tomato soup and then said original recipe like he invented fucking tomatoes. <laughs> you boil some tomatoes, bro. What are you talking about? Huh? My original recipe. Chicken. Did you invent the bud? I'm gonna fight you. So, not gonna lie, my tomato soup was a hit tonight. Yeah, but it wasn't. It, there was a, it was a homeless shelter. They had to eat it. There was no... <laughs> Alright, whatever. I'm just gonna let this guy have his win. He looks like he's about to kill someone. I really wish mom and dad could have been here to see all this. They would have been so proud. I miss them so much. She was a staple of Hallmark movies. Everyone's parents are just dying. I wish mom and dad were here to see this. Too bad they got struck by that reindeer. Oh man, Santa can be a, such a bitch. Just Hallmark movies have someone just nonchalantly dying. And then meanwhile, Soupman over here is saying not gonna lie like a hundred times. I'm not gonna lie. As if anybody ever claimed him of lying. So I, I don't know, this is just a mint scene that just, I wish it went on forever. But it does go on forever. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I never realized I was gonna co-own a diner with this pretty little one right over here, but mm -hmm. I'm very happy I got into the business. You guys are so sweet. Oh, well, thank you. Director man, this is just a little note for you and the editor. Once the clip is done, cut it.
Can we cut it? You feel that? That's crepitus. It's like sandpaper. Listen, I don't know how you're walking, much less playing professional hockey. Lauren? Anyway, now we see Ivanhoe and his legs are broken. This prompts the wafer thin plot. If you're not following the plot, you don't need to. There isn't really one. All you need to know is that Ivanhoe broke his leg, so he has to come back to his hometown. Because apparently coming back home mends your leg. That's all you need to know. No, 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 no. You don't have to do that. I have a cleaner to do that in the morning. So, what are you going to do next? Did we- Shut up, Ivan. Can we just take a second to appreciate the greatness of Napoleon? So, what are we going to do? That's not Indian. Can't do it anymore. That Napoleon's too good. His acting is like Indian Jack Nicholson. If you missed the plot, Ivan is now sidelined and he is worried about his career. And I guess Napoleon is his manager. So, he's gonna find him a way to get back into money while Ivan doesn't actually do anything. Did we lose all the advertisement deals when I got caught from the team? Yes. And you can't negotiate with another advertiser. You cannot play with the bad knee. If you don't get me another deal, I'm over. Yes. I have nothing. This is all that I know. Hey. It's really poor financial planning, my guy. I don't mean to tell you how to run your life, but if you've been in the NHL and you're making like hella money, you better use that finances to, you know, make investments. You know what? It's a Hallmark movie. I don't know why I'm giving you financial advice. <sighs> uh, the only other comment I have is that this man is a model who also actually raps on Instagram. Prefer the present, present to the great without hesitant great peasants can wait, pushing for politics. It's about drive, it's about power. We stay hungry, we devour. Follow bottles and snitching, you out of marble, stitching your mama. Aaron Noble, he raps as well on his Instagram. So, yeah, I would say stick to acting, but that's not going too well. So, I don't know, man, stick to modeling. Nice face, bro. Don't worry, I will take. See, I told you, you could be in a mafia movie if you just put some different music over that. I would, don't worry, I will take care. Gather the troops. Yeah, just gather the people, bro. We're gonna kill someone. Oh, sorry, this is a Christmas movie. I mean, I'm gonna put coal in everyone's stockings. I, I just want to see more of Napoleon. I want to know his backstory. I want to know why he chose this scrub to manage. <laughs> Seeing as how Ivan Hall cannot actually play any more hockey for the season, he decides to go back home for the holidays to visit his sister and family. I am. Would you mind taking a photo with my daughter? Absolutely. Hey, what's your name? My name is Jennifer. Jennifer, I like that name. <laughs> I don't know why I find this so funny, but I love how he, he, he bends down. He's like, Jennifer, nice name. Why are you touching all like <laughs> This was a scene that the director put in the movie to show how good of a man Ivan Hall is. We didn't know anything about him prior to this, but he's a good man. He takes pictures with kids. I, I don't know how else to say it, but Ivan's out here being a little too touchy sometimes. You're going to see what I mean. Let's go. Nick, Nick, you never believe who I just saw at the bus station. The pastor, who, fun fact, is also the director of this movie. This is Daniel Knudsen. He plays a guy called Chris, the pastor, or the pasta, and he sees Ivan back in town, and he goes and he runs straight to Big Dick Nick. Big Dick Nick! To tell him the news. This guy's Saint Nick, by the way, so they got actual Santa Claus. That's cool. Let me guess. Ivan Hall. How did you know that? How did you know that? <laughs> And the Oscar goes to me, motherfucker. I direct this movie. I act like a badass. I'm like the Quentin Tarantino of acting. And I'm like the Jamie Foxx of directing. I got that mixed up. Just shut up. Keep rolling. His sister Victoria told me he's moving to Hope Springs to be near the family. Well, does Allison know yet? I don't think so. Well, should we tell her? <laughs> Those are some of the realest Hallmark reactions in the world. Well, should we tell her? <sighs> Oscar moment. Cry. Wait, can we do that again? Just, just feed me my line. Well, should we tell? <sighs> well, should we tell her? I'm trying to make the tears come out. Going? <sighs> Daniel, stick to directing. Uh, with everything he did, I feel like she probably deserves to know. Christopher, we've got a lot of people to make Christmas special for. Here's the list. Birdhouse, bench, wood toys. I think this is stuff I can help you make. Good old Saint Nick. Oh, Merry Christmas. 
Oh, shut the fuck. What the hell line was that? Why'd you have to put that in the movie? You should have said something like better to set him up. If that was going to be one of your lame jokes, you should have been like, oh, St. Nick, oh, how come your wife left you? And then he was like, ho, ho, ho's. <laughs> you should have said something like that, bro. That would have been funny. I had to listen to that shitty joke. Giving a candy cane for that one. Sorry. Naughty director. Meanwhile, Allison is told that she is being let go off. Hey, Allison, it's Ken. Listen, I'm afraid today's the day the ice breaks. Okay, all right, enough with the ice puns, please. Jesus, why? I don't think I got enough of these. Today's the day the ice breaks. Could you be more shitty as a boss than to make puns while you're firing someone? Can you imagine if you worked at the golf range and the guy was like, here's a hole in one, you're fucked. <laughs> Can you not just let her down without giving her the, like, eighth degree there, please? I feel sorry for Allison hearing that shit. Hey, babe. Hi, babe. Are you busy right now? Uh, yeah, sort of. I got a big deal going down today. Anyway, Allison then calls her man, her boo, because she's got a new boo. This movie wouldn't have conflict. It would literally have no conflict if this next character called Bobby didn't exist, and Bobby is Allison's new boyfriend. Now, Bobby is a dude who works, and he is portrayed as a villainous character, but in reality, he's just a man who is working to put food on the table for a woman who thinks that figure skating is going to actually pay the bills in a town of, I don't know, 30 people. Bobby is the fucking hero as what I'm saying. But anyway, let's watch this amazing scene. Ivan? This is oh, Nixon. So good. Hey. I'm good, I'm good. My knees are a little sore, but as they say, your joints are the first to go as you get older. Thank you. Hey, you wanna help me put up some signs for the charity event coming up? We're raising money for the soup kitchen. I don't know what it is about this man, but his overacting kills me. And I love the dialogue replacement. My knees are a bit sore, but as they say, when in Rome, have Roman sex. <laughs> Honestly, I, it could have been that, and it would have been just as normal as what he did. I would get freaked out if a man started doing this to me and like waving around like he was the embodiment of water itself. I am water. I would really freak out. This is what happens when Ivan is back in town and he's meeting everyone, hugging them really tightly. I guess I guess he found someone on the street that he knows and now she's asking him to hang up flyers. But then he sees something out of the corner of his eye. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, you know what? It's all right. Thank you. Bye bye. That was basically an NPC conversation. Hey! Hey! My leg's okay. My knees are bad. How about you? Oh, I'm okay. Just raising money for the Chorin. Would you like to? Uh, no, no, thank you. Okay. Bye. Ivan's such a good man that he actually didn't even want to hang up flyers to help save the needy people. All this lady asked was, can you hang up flyers? And he's like, man, I, I don't know about that. That's a tough ask for a man like me. And he just walked off. What a bitch. <laughs> Ivan is detestable sometimes, bro. Meanwhile, back at Bobby's workplace. Hey, babe. You okay? You sounded upset on the phone. Not really. That jerk can cancel my classes today. That jerk can cancel my classes today. I guess, you know, he says that I'm not making any money and he can't afford to keep, like, paying my share of the stuff. He's such a dick. Like, he says that, oh, you're $6,000 in debt and I'll bail you out this time, but not anymore. Like, he doesn't even have decency. Bobby, are you listening? I'm sorry, baby. Give me one second. You never give me any attention, Bobby. That's pretty much what's going on here. Did you say your class are going good? No! I just told you that they got cancelled. I mean, you'll figure something out, right? You always do. Or you can find another ice rink to work at. Or maybe it's time you... Maybe it's time you hung up the skates and found a real job. Bobby, this is a real job. Not a, no, 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 it's not. Not in your hometown of 30 people. How many students are you going to teach? All 30? Bobby has a point. Bobby's out here making the real money that you can't make because you can't sustain yourself because you're skating. Because you used to be a former ice skater, but now you're just a teacher. And you know what? You're not even a teacher because you got fired. Now you're just a person with skates. And that is sad. At least Bobby's making moves out here. He's Bobby the Boulder because he's building a fucking relationship with the planet. I don't know what I'm saying. I just I just wanted to say that. Thomas, my man, tell me you sealed the deal. Oh, I love you. Okay, I'll see you in a little bit. 
I just want to point this scene out and put a little candy cane on me for this. Uh, I think that was the director trying to be smart but actually coming off stupid because what he said at the end in the script, Bobby actually in front of Allison said, oh man, did you close the deal? And then said he loves him, which is supposed to indicate that Bobby loves his work more than he does his relationship. And that was the director trying to throw a little like hint that this man really loves his job as if you couldn't tell. He couldn't even take five minutes out of his day to listen to his girlfriend. He already belittled her and then he said he loved another man in front of her he also has a bottle of wine next to the scissors which is very concerning that workplaces even allow this but hey it's a hallmark movie ladies and gentlemen I i'm not drunk enough to enjoy this movie without pointing out holes in its way for thin plot but let's carry on oh hey how did it go hey same old same old <sighs> excuse us hey. i think we're okay i think it's just that time of year he's super busy and Can we get a backstory there? Is is there any reason this man is carrying the kid like he's a I'm moving this piece of cargo? Is, is it normal to carry kids like that? What? Hey guys, what's up, bro? How are you, bud? Good to see you. Ah, uh, are you? Good, sis. What are you doing, step You are not gonna believe who I saw in town today. Allison Grant. Did you talk? Wow, you are never going to believe who I saw in town today, sis. It's Allison Grant. She fucking lives there. Why wouldn't you see her? Guess who I saw at the store today? My reflection. That's a mirror, bro. Sorry, I'm Ivan Hall. I, my IQ is 18. Did you talk? No, when well, she looked at me. What well, kind of look? Was it like a surprised look or an <clears throat> I never want to see you again type look? The sister's daughter is very invested in Ivan's love life. She's like, I want to see you and Allison get back together. And she's almost too invested for someone that young. But creepy, but creepy. She walked the other way as soon as she saw me. So that was an I never want to see you again type look. <laughs> There's that Ivan Hall acting. Once you drink something, you have to express how you're now fulfilled with the water. This is acting school. That's what all his money that went to acting school taught him. Drink the water. <laughs> ah, oh, that's so good. <laughs> ah, ah, woo! Nothing like the taste of H2O, huh, sis? Oh, oh, that's not in the script? I'm sorry, am I fired? I'm fired? I'm sorry, my bad. Maybe Bobby's right. Maybe it is time for me to find a new job. I'll give the Nixons a call. Let's just see if next week they'll let you start teaching there. Allison is back at home setting up the tree and now she needs to figure out a new way to get a job to sustain herself and they come up with this amazing nugget of an ideal i don't have any students though we can sign up at allison yeah we can ask our friends at school maybe, maybe we, we can, can make some flyers that we can hand out on monday flyers like a coupon book we'll call it the christmas coupon roll credits seriously roll them please <laughs> It's something special between the girls and I every once in a while for holidays. They'll make a coupon book for me that I can redeem. Bitch, I know what a coupon is. First of all, I'm brown. Of course I know what a coupon is. Secondly, that's not the part that you guys should be focusing on. This person doesn't have a job. This is very redundant thinking. You are giving coupons to a job that you haven't even gotten yet. As the saying goes, don't give someone a free ride if you don't have a car. Otherwise, you're just a man who has someone else on his back. Oh, girls, you do that for me? You guys are the best twin nieces ever. Okay, they're the only twin nieces you have. You know, Bobby, he's supposed to be the worst person in this movie. Bobby is like a saint to me for putting up with your bullshit. Bobby needs a medal of honor or something. Would you like to come to our Aunt Alley skating lessons? Wanna go skating? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, the goal, the goals actually do flyers and they give it out to everyone in the city or town and Ivan Hall happens to be one of them. And him and his niece actually decide to go and see what the skating lessons are about. Thank you, ladies. He just can't stop bopping people. Every time he sees any person, he just has to physically touch them. Ivan's a very visual and physical person. If he sees you, he must touch you. <laughs> it sounds like an R. Kelly thing. All right, once you guys get to this side, you're going to turn around and skate back. My ears burn. Keep up the good work. I'm just going to say it. Allison is a shit teacher. What they decided to do was actually go onto a lake and teach people how to skate, which in theory, in a movie, sounds brilliant. But in real life is such a hazard, especially when this is not licensed or legal. Once again, I'm not your financial planner, but I'm also not your lawyer. But if I was, I would advise against going and skating in an open place of ice where kids can drown if the ice breaks. I would, you know, 
I just want to say, you're so stupid. But anyway, that has nothing to do with anything. Allison is teaching people on an actual ice lake, and Ivan turns up to watch his niece, but also really just wants to talk to Allison. Hey, you know if you lean forward when you push off, you get better balance and distance. Hey, uh, you know that you don't have to talk like this because it won't be any louder. Please, whenever you watch Ivan Hall or the actor who is playing him, watch this man's hands. He cannot not use them. Every time Ivan Hall does anything and talks to someone, he must use his hands in some way. Right now, he's talking about skates and he picks up a bag and indicates that in the bag are skates. No normal human needs to indicate what's in the bag, but Ivan does. And I love his hand movements because he's like an Italian meets a Swedish person on crack steroids. It's amazing. I actually brought my skates today, so if you want a demonstration, I'll be happy to help you. Considering that these parents are paying me to teach their kids a lesson, I'm gonna have to respectfully decline your offer. Ooh, it's chilly out here today. Al Pacino's not even dead and he would be rolling in his grave. This is not acting. This is some form of torture that I've never seen before in my life. Oh my goodness. It wasn't even a joke. She just said she didn't need help. And he's like, It is cold in here, bro. Ivan, get with the program, bro. I'm trying to root for you. Quick intermission. How you guys feeling? You like the movie so far? How you feeling, Masupio? Ayúdame, me estoy muriendo. He's depressed. Back to the movie. Why were you interrupting Miss Allison so much? You weren't being very nice to her. She just slammed that door, bro. Was that the best take you guys had? Jesus. Miss Allison and I have a history. It's adult stuff. Stuff you don't need to worry about. You like Miss Allison, don't you? That is none of your business, young lady. Okay, fine. But in case you're interested, I know that Miss Allison practices at Nixon's Pond on Monday evenings. Nixon's Burger Pond on Monday lettuce. evenings. Where the fuck do you think you just came from? Do, do you not, were you not just at the park where she practices? Were you not just there? Would you like to come to our Aunt Allie skating lessons? Wanna go skating? Yeah. Okay. You already have a flyer that says that's where they meet to do it. Why did you have the skates on? Someone needs to bop some sense into this kid. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But wow, what a line that was. Keep gliding, guys. Good job. Every time she says good job, someone falls. Today we are gonna focus on our balance. I'd be happy to show you how it's done. I'll be happy to, to call you uh, out on your bullshit, you know? Tree you later, you know what I'm saying? I like how he points to the skates. He couldn't, like, holding it up wasn't enough. Like, maybe if he held it up, he thought that she'd be like, what, what are you holding up? So he had to point to it after he held to it. Okay, hot shot. It's day two and Ivan seems to wear Allison down and they both are now going to teach skating together. This is the love story that's developing. The chemistry that you see happening is sort of like Breaking Bad, unintentionally. More bad. Anyway though, back at the dino. Is uh, Allie here? No, she just stepped out actually. She's teaching today. Teaching where? I thought her class got canceled at the rink. At the rink they did, but now she's teaching on her own out at the Nixon's Pond. I think she'll be back in about an hour. Teaching adult men now, you can't even tell me? What are you doing here? Well, Lauren said you'd be down here, so I figured I'd come say hi to my girlfriend. Bobby goes to the skating park and then sees Allison there with Ivan, and he gets mad. You can't even tell me? What are you doing here? So I figured I'd come say hi to my girlfriend. Two professional skaters, none of them could stop on, come on, nice. You costed two people who couldn't skate. Why did you make the movie about skating? <laughs> this is the worst conceived idea that I think I've seen. Yeah, man, it came out with my knees. Figured I'd help out with class a bit today. Hey man, came out with my knees. I figured out that I'm, I'm going to help with the class today. Should we take that again? Nope. Wouldn't get any better if you did, bro. All right, I agree. Carry on. Do you have a loan? What is, what is wrong with you, bro? Yeah, I think Ellie does just fine by herself. I've been home. I'm Bobby, Ellie's boyfriend. You know what, she doesn't need any help. Ivan Hall also said his full name and the worst thing that he did was did this for a handshake. What do you want, a cup his balls, bro? What is this about? Who goes for a handshake like this? I thought that Bobby was originally angry because he's like, damn, she's hanging around her ex, her high school sweetheart, and it's kind of freaking me out. And I was like, okay, I don't like that Bobby's jealous, but maybe he has a point. But then later in the scene, Bobby says this. How do you know him? He's Chloe's uncle. Bobby doesn't know who the hell that is, which makes it really weird that this man instantly just saw her with another guy and was like, she's fine by herself, bro. This could be her real estate agent for all he knows. Bobby is a jealous MF. This movie has a lot of themes. Jealousy, people not being able to skate, Indian agents, NHL players. Yeah. 
What it doesn't have is a plot. They need that next time. But anyway, Allison is going to proceed to tell Bobby how she actually and truly knows Ivanhoe, the man, the myth, the legend. We pretty much know each other our whole lives. We started dating in eighth grade. There we go. Eighth grade. Looking like some real eighth graders there. One is 34, one is 65. And honestly, I can believe it. With those two people's IQ, they probably got held back in the eighth grade at their age anyway. You never thought to tell me about him? Or? Does it really matter, Bobby? I mean, we're together now. Bobby's character sort of plays the role of villain and conflict, and without Bobby, there is no other obstacles or plot devices that separate the two. Maybe Ivan's job later on, but that's it. I personally think she should stay with Bobby, but anyway. I love you. Whatever. Next scene we see is a Christmas party. Everyone is there, including Bobby. Hello, Ivan. This is home. Oh, oh. I will say. Uh, I didn't cut that. I just zoomed in on him saying his lines without even moving his lips. Is he a ventriloquist? Nope. He's Ivan Hall, professional NHL player who got his legs ruined. Oh my god, could you guys even like at least try? Bobby, how about a snow globe? Miss Holmes, the snow globe is very tempting. Thank you. But I think that I'd rather have Ivan's mini toolkit. <laughs> That was a penis joke. Ha <laughs> ha! Mini toolkit. Nice one. Good one, director. How did you know that? That's the only dirty joke in the movie. You know what? I would love if Ivan just whooped his ding dong out and was like, yeah, I smack a puck with that, bro. I'm a hockey player. At least it would add something to the movie, okay? That looks like a little bit more fitting gift for Ivan, don't you think? I think my sister would love these. I'm glad I could get them for her. You know, this scene has nothing to do with anything. It's just a bunch of fuller. Bobby tries to emasculate Ivan by giving him some lotion or cream, and Ivan's response is, yeah, you know what? I'd love to give that to my sister. And Bobby's like, how could you play me like that? He's pretty good. He's got skill. But the thing I find most concerning is that Allison actually really had a good laugh at that. She was way too happy seeing Ivan Hall get messed up. For shame. This is a Christmas movie. I'm trying to be in the spirit. To be honest with you, I'm trying to have a couple spirits because I'm way too sober for this movie. Anyway, the next day, Ivan Hall goes to eat some breakfast and he chooses the best option in the world. The classic burger. <laughs> Ivan, what a surprise. Good to see you here today. Hey Lauren, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I heard on the street that this classic burger is very good. Yeah, you heard that on the street, did you? You went out to the street, you're like, hey, 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 crackhead, what's the word on the burger? Hey, man, get the classic burger. Get, 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 get the classic burger, bro. Okay, okay, man. You stay off that crack. Couldn't even, couldn't even if I tried, bro. All right. That's such a weird line to write in the script. Is the classic burger going to save his relationship? No? Then he should shut the fuck up about it. It's a good choice. It's not a good choice, actually. Don't commend him on making choices from the menu. Is Ivan that dumb that he looks at a menu and he's like, Can I, can I get a pina colada, sir? Sir, this is a car wash. Anyway, I guess uh, him and St. Nick over here meet each other. St. Nick is like, do you, are you doing anything later? Or do you want to see my studio? And Ivan's like, hell yeah, bro. And then they go and meet each other. Again, a lot of Fuller has nothing to do with anything, does not have any semblance of plot and doesn't show up later, but it happens. Well, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon and Merry Christmas to you, son. Yeah. I don't really uh, get into Christmas too much, but I do appreciate that, thank you. So you don't really care for Christmas? I don't. You know, you could come by my shop today if you'd like. Well, I don't really have too much going on nowadays, so sure, I think I can do that. Good. Today it is? Okay. Good. Ivan's looking really happy, man. This is super animated, like, <laughs> I come to your studio today and I get the classic burger. Oh, what a good day. <laughs> What is this? Oh, some gifts for children. Wait a minute. You're the secret Santa, aren't you? Oh, it's some gifts for the children. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. My Sherlock Holmes senses are tingling. Saint Nick. White beard. White man. Mid 80s. Possibly 90s. I think he has a reindeer. I think I saw him have a reindeer. You're the secret Santa, you bitch! Took him a long time, huh? Like a Windows 94 computer. I don't even think that existed, but you're that. Shh. It's a secret. Get the hell out of here with lines like, You're the secret Santa, aren't you? <laughs> it's a secret. I hate that line so much. Is this a purple heart? You mind if I ask what happened? I just happened to do the right thing at the right time. 
Tell him to make it count. This man actually used to go to war, but won't tell you his story. That would be a more exciting story, but they don't go into that, do they? Anyway, the next day, Ivan and Allison meet up back at the ice place. But things shortly turn sour when Bobby shows up again. Can you imagine sitting in the car and seeing a grown man do medium turnaroundsies and then start doing the robot on the ice? Are you jealous? Are you just confused? Are you sad? I, th I would be a bit depressed if I saw my current girlfriend getting spun by another man. I would play the Careless Whisper soundtrack and slowly cry myself to sleep. You forget you have a boyfriend all of a sudden? Look man, like she said, totally innocent, my fault. Dude, was... mind your own business. We don't need to see his identification. Hey, this is between Allie and I. I don't want to get in the middle of anything. I'll take off. I'll see you tomorrow. I don't want to get in the middle of anything. I take off. I need to burn. All right. Thank you for the hand movements, Jesse Pinkman. But oh, you're not going to see her tomorrow. You're not going to see her anymore. Okay, stay away from her. Bobby, that's enough. I was just a friend. You heard her. Man. We're just friends. That's it. No, you're not friends. You're nothing anymore. Okay? You understand me? Bro, the first thing he said was, I I'm going to leave. I better get out of here. Then you two pulled him back to tell him that he's nothing. And then now you're like, hey, you better leave, bro. Why are you being like this to Ivan? Ivan, you better leave. Fuck nights at Freddy. But after Ivan leaves, Allison and Bobby get into it, and Allison breaks up with Bobby. He was just here ice skating. It's not a big deal. Yes, it is a big deal, Allie. It's a big deal to me. Maybe we should just take a break. Mark my words, Allison Grant. You're going to regret this. I do. You may kiss the bride. Hey, Darman fam, make sure to subscribe to my channel. She then needs someone to confide in, and she finds Chris, or as we know him, the director of this movie. She also has been developing feelings for Ivan this whole time. Oh, I hate people who do that. I hate people who open the door and then knock. Bro, do either. Knock and then come in, or open the door and don't even knock. Don't do both. Hey, Pastor Chris. Can I talk to you for a sec? I came to talk to you about Ivan. Well, I don't think Ivan is a book in the Bible, but I may have an opinion or two I could share. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's just, ever since he's been back in town, I have these feelings and... We all did things together and... I know it was really hard on you when he left. The movie also pertains around the fact that Ivan just left. He didn't come back for 10 years. Nobody knows why he left. Mysterious. And then he's back. Mysterious again. And I guess Chris has all the answers. I mean, did he ever say anything to you about like years ago when he left that note for me? No, he didn't. But he did talk to me about it a few days ago. He did. What did he say? I think that's something you need to talk to Ivan about. Why is he talking like that? I think that's what you need to talk to Ivan about. He sounds like a villain. Sorry, I think I have something in my throat. Do you have any water? I'm pot. <laughs> Feels so much better. You have an opportunity to choose forgiveness. Because forgiveness can only be given by the one to whom the wrong was done. So can an STD. Carry on. So tell me. What's going on with you and Ivan? Fucking nobody knows in this plot, bro. I have no idea. I don't think the actors have any idea. You have something special. It's like magic. Yeah. yeah. But how do I know he's not gonna hurt me again? Mm. How do I know he's not gonna hurt me again? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't give advice. I'm not your therapist. Go back to the ice. Spend a little time with him. That way you know for sure one way or the other. Yeah. You got two planks and you just pressed action. Anyway, I guess uh, Allison's sister gives her some advice saying that she needs to hang out more with Ivan to really figure out whether she feels that she loves him or not. And it happens. Turns out she loves him. I see you're still running your same old route. Sure am. Next day, they meet up running. Ivan's like, I challenge you to a race. Matter of fact, I bet I could beat you in a race right now. I think you're such a great athlete. Meet me tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. at the rec center. What happens at 10 a.m.? And then they go to yoga. This is so bad. Finding our balance. <sighs> oh. <sighs> 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 
this man re-injures himself by falling down during yoga, which is egregious to say the least. But anyway, he then whispers as not to disturb the class. I would assume that if you get really badly injured in class, people would stop. You'd think so. But for Ivanhoe, no, nobody stops. The class moves on and they're actually kind of annoyed that this dude is even disrupting them. You need to keep the ice on it right now. Tell you what. Twins and I, we're going to make some Christmas cookies, stick around and eat them with us. By then you should be fine and good to go. Fine. So then Allison says that she can help heal the knee, but while she does, why don't you stay for a while and have some Christmas cookies? Ivan agrees to this and this sets off the longest montage in the movie. I've cut it down and then sped it up, but it wasn't actually fast enough. So then I rendered that and sped that part up because that's how much time it spent actually showing a montage that didn't need to be that long. It went from about 10 minutes to 30 seconds. Like I said, I've shortened it like a penis so that we can actually enjoy this damn movie. Movie. Enjoy it. All the montage is supposed to do is show them being in love, which you could do without 20 minutes of fuller. I guess not this director. How did you know? So after that, they actually have a Christmas gathering and it's a party and uh, everyone gathers around for the classic Christmas event. Allison and Ivan are going to the party as well. And Allison finally gets the courage to ask why Ivan hates Christmas so much. And he tells her. You know, Ivan, ever since your dad died, never been the same with Christmas. What happened? <laughs> that deserves one of these. Ivan, ever since your dad died, you've been acting different. Ivan, ever since your mom died, you've been not going to her house as much. I never heard of someone just say it so nonchalantly. Ever since your dad died, you've been acting kind of weird, bro. They're both competing for dumbass Olympics, and they're both getting gold. I'm about to see my grandparents at their cabin. <laughs> oh, this is the Oscar moment. He's going for his Oscar scene. The car spun in circles and the driver's side smashed into a tree. <laughs> I watched my own father die on Christmas Day. Came all this way for a tree, let's get one, huh? I love his hand movements. <laughs> well, we came all this way for a tree, let's get one, bro. Oh, Ivan, never change, buddy, never change. Also, um, the story about his dad dying is why he doesn't like Christmas events and also, coincidentally, why he left to be in the NHL. And while that's somewhat of a, I guess, decent thing, it has nothing to do with Allison. So I don't know why he just left her high and dry. If anything, I thought he needed her more. But hey, that's the excuse they're going with in this movie. Let's not question it. We're gonna go on a real date. They then go out on a real date because we didn't have enough fuller before. We need more. Okay, where are we? Is that your brother-in-law? Uh, they go on a date somewhere that requires a helicopter right? The brother-in-law was just there singing, so he must have been the person flying the helicopter. I don't know, but anyway, they do this romantic scene, and you know what? It's a little romantic. I'll give them that. It's a good scene, the song's not bad. It might be the only thing in the movie I liked. I'm gonna meme it though. Yeah, I made mistakes, so I know they were mine. Sorry, I had to. Anyway, back to the party. Next few days, they're, they're having like this Christmas gathering where everyone comes to the barnyard to just chill. Everyone's there, including Pastor Chris, who says this. Hey, I know this guy. I see you guys on TV. Well, what about me? Oh, I know you, I know you. I've known this guy since high school. Oh yeah? We go way back. That's awesome. But I gotta head out. All right. That's my favorite scene in the movie. Hey, I know you. Hey, oh, hey, 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 I can never forget about you. We, we go way back, but I gotta go. I got, I got better shit to do than hang out with you fucking idiots. Like, what, what was that scene even meant to be? Why is Pasta Chris so in a hurry? Where is he going? He couldn't even spare half a minute. <laughs> oh, Pasta Chris really pulling the rank right there. How's it going? Bobby. Why don't we go over here? You can help me with the potato sack race. So anyway, they have a potato sack race, which, you know, sounds fun on baseball, but when you see the contestants, Bobby, Ivan Hall, two kids and another kid. It was a pretty rigged contest, I gotta be honest with you. Two of those kids are men. One of them is a former NHL player whose leg is broken. The other one is a businessman. So I don't, you tell me who's really winning. Now we're gonna do a potato sack race. <laughs> Lovely lady. 
Uh, guys, all right. Well, thanks, everybody. Ah, oh, then Bobby actually wins the race and gets like a runner's high, then actually kisses her in front of everyone, including Ivan Hall, who I guess doesn't see it because he doesn't react. I thought this was going to break out into a fight. I thought it was going to be a fight scene. Not only does Ivan not react, I don't think he cares. This dude was just chilling, coming in second. He was okay. So Ivan just knocked there, doesn't care that another man kissed his girl right now. But the scene proceeds to get weirder. Bobby actually proposes to Allison. And then there's a kid in the background eating popcorn who is all of us, like basically. Ellie, I've been, I've been thinking about everything a lot. Bobby, I don't know, with everything hey. that's happened and- Ellie, please. Look, I should have done this so much sooner when I ask you to be my wife. Listen, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to make a decision right now. Just wear it, think about it. Hey, hey, you don't have to make a decision right now. Just wear this. Think about it. Look at it every day. I'm Bobby. I like Bobby's persuasion methods, y'all. Beautiful. Yes, Bobby. Your coaching opportunity just opened up. This position comes with many benefits. Meanwhile, the plot thickens. Ivan's manager, Napoleon, calls and says he's finally sorted something out. Ivan can now be a manager. He was a shitty NHL player. He couldn't even hit the ball, but he might be a good coach. And Napoleon is just doing the right thing by saying, I've got you a job. And now Ivan has to make the toughest decision of his life. Take a job or not take a job. Ivan. Could we, could we tone down the music for a second? Are you listening to me? Y yeah, I'm sorry, what'd you say? The team needs a coach. Okay, <laughs> I love that scene. Napoleon was like, it comes with many benefits and then stopped speaking. And then he's like, Ivan, are you listening? He just waited. None of them talked for like five minutes. It was just a funny, like random pause. If you take out the music after him saying there's many benefits, it's just an awkwardly long pause. Your coaching opportunity just opened up. This position comes with many benefits. Ivan. <laughs> it's so weird. But I need an answer now. All right, well, can I at least have a few days to think about it? Okay. Thank you, Napoleon. Ivan, we need an answer right now. Uh, can I have like, I don't know, two weeks? Okay, okay. Uh, damn, all right. It's such a lenient boss. Ivan, I'm serious. I'm way too busy to deal with this right now. I just got a new opportunity in the league. So while Ivan is thinking about things, he and Ali meet each other at the restaurant and she gets sort of angry at him for having a job. Yeah, I heard. No note this time? Don't do this. Don't marry this guy. You know it's not right. You know it's always been you and me. Don't you see? It's always been you and me. I'm huh. high for you. I don't want to be low, down in the dumps. I want to see that peachy ass and give it a smack. Maybe a flap, flap, flap. Girl, I'm Ivan Hall, a hockey player. Has it always been you and me? Or has it always been you in hockey? Ivan and Ali have a fight, and the fight actually causes Ivan to say, yes, I will accept that job back in wherever the hell his NHL team is. Yeah, Kuma, what's up? It's Ivan. I thought about your offer. I want to let you know I'm in. Great. That's got to be a meme. Someone gift <laughs> that. He was just on the phone waiting for that. Great. Oh. Yes. Oh, he did, he did he did it, he did it, he did it. We got Ivan Hall, baby. One of the worst players. We got him to coach our team. Have you ever wanted a tank? Well, we're gonna. I gotta go. Please don't go, Uncle Ivy. You and Miss Allison still need to work things out. So Ivan Hall leaves and his niece is actually there and she's way too invested as usual in his love life. Not sure why she cares this much, but she tries to get him to stay even though he's like, I have to go. Alice is gonna marry someone else, okay? There's nothing I can do about it. I gotta go. But she doesn't even like him and he's not a very nice person. I'm not sure what this kid was doing for the last 10 years when she didn't see her uncle because he didn't return. This man is like a foreigner to her because he hasn't been there for the last 10 years in Hope Springs. He gives her no hope. She would need springs to get to him. I don't know, just a horrible shitty uncle, but I guess she really loves him. Huh. 
Yes. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering why the audio is so muffled in the scene, true story. The director couldn't afford crack, so he, he spent too much money on it, and they had no budget for the scene. It's not a true story, but if it was, it would have been just as plausible as whatever the hell the actual reason is. So this is the one shot in the movie where I think the directing actually gets it right. There's a shot of Napoleon seeing Ivan and Allison together and wondering if he broke their relationship apart because he's now here. There's a shot of Ivan seeing the Christmas coupon at the lake and wondering how Ali is doing. And there's a shot of Ali looking at the bench, wondering what Ivan is doing because her fondest memory of Ivan is not the dinner, not the date, not the helicopter ride, but him sitting on the bench where he fucking belongs. <laughs> I kept the scene in the movie because I wanted to put a candy cane here specially for the scene. The doctor showing Ivan which leg of his is the injured one. And it's funny because only one leg is injured, but they made him take a double x-ray. Look at the doctor, he's like, is this the broken one? Oh, I might have injected the wrong leg. Oh, you might have to get amputated, bro. Sorry. Uh-oh. Anyway, as Ivan's getting healed up, Bobby and Allison go around showing off the engagement to the world. Here's to the best police chief Hope Springs has ever had. Dad. Speaking of amazing women, Allison and I have decided to take our journey together a step further. For someone who just got engaged, I'm not too sure how happy you look about it. I'm happy, I'm excited. It just was really fast. So Allison and Bobby are going through with their wedding. They haven't set a date, but they're like progressing towards it. And uh, Ivan is just thinking about coming back to town, I guess, because that's what is happening. I don't know what's happening, but I'll tell you what is happening in the next scene. Ivan's niece and her friends somehow are all invested enough to know about Allison and Ivan's love life. And now all they want for Christmas is Ivan and Allison to fuck each other. I wish Uncle Ivan and Miss Allison were still dating. What would you most wish for this Christmas? I want Uncle Ivan and Allison to be happy. I want them to f Do you think you can help make that happen? I kind of hope I never have a kid ask for another man to get a bono so he can bang his ex-girlfriend like that. If I ever have to play Santa and a kid says that, I'm going to throw that person off my lap. <laughs> what, what are you worrying about your uncle getting laid for? That's a very difficult wish, you see. Hmm. Saint Nick had trouble with that one, huh? You want you want him to fall in love? Well, let me just. I thought you wanted a, a a Barbie doll or something. You know, I thought you wanted some real shit. You want you want your uncle to get back with his ex and have that ex sex. You want? All right. I'm just saying you could get maybe Need for Speed would be good. You don't nothing. Okay. Ballet lesson nothing. Okay. So just to confirm, you want your uncle to be banging his ex. All right. Weird town. Weird town. Napoleon then has a realization and comes to an epiphany. He has to let his new coach go back to the love of his life. And then he tells Ivan that he's missing something in life and that he should go for that instead of go for the job, which is the lesson in this movie, I guess. And it's a great scene by a great actor, Napoleon. We support you. You were always missing something, but when you went back home, you found it. So are you saying you want me to give up this huge coaching opportunity to move back to Hope Springs? Yes. You're crazy. Oh. Ivan needs to process things with his hands. He can't, the head not good enough. So he's like, you, you want me, that's me, to quit my coaching job with you, that's you, so me, you, and go back, back, that's how I do back. Whenever someone says back off, I'm like, uh, and then I say off, back off. You want, you want me to go back to where I came from and marry the love of my life? Well, that's just crazy. So I guess Ivan goes back to seal the deal with the love of his life, Allison. And I kind of wish they had a scene where it was at the altar. Ivan pops in on a hockey mask and stuff and everybody thinks that he's Jason from Friday the 13th. But he's like, nope, just Ivan. And then he gets down on one knee and smacks a puck into her hand. Like, I would have loved to see something like that. That would have just been super good. But unfortunately, that's not what happens. Instead, what happens is she just breaks up with Bobby and everything seems to solve itself at the right time. Come on, this is a good deal. Bobby, what is this I hear about you selling to a big box store? Hi, Allie. You know, you never pay attention to me, and your business is way more important than anything, and you lie to everybody. 
if I could just step in here, Bobby's only lying because people here are too dumb to realize that if they sell stuff, they can make more money and the whole town will be well, just more well off. Secondly, he is trying to make money for you because you're giving coupons at a skating class that is on an ice rink that is very seasonal. And also the kids are going to grow up soon. And thirdly, uh, you never talk to me anymore. This man actually wanted to marry you. Okay. I don't mean to defend Bobby, but who's the real batch? It's yeah. I just can't be with somebody like that. Ellie. Come on! Hey, Allie! Come on! Come on, Allie! Come on! Come on! All this from a slice of gabagool? Are you gonna run after her? No, no, no. I sat down already. Hey, give me two eggs, please. Four eggs then. Four eggs. Two for me, two more for me. Oh, you're gonna go see Ivan, aren't you? You wanna be my ride? Yeah, let's do it. Anyway, Allison is like, hey man, I'm gonna see Bobby, and it sets up for a great last scene, and she sees Pastor Chris waiting at the one bus station that Hope Springs has. How, how? Oh, hey, Pastor Chris, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm just here to pick someone up. What brings you here? Well, I just thought I'd take a quick trip, clear my head a little bit. So, of course. This is possibly the one of the most awkward scenes I've ever seen in any movie ever. Both of them, who've known each other since childhood, say two words and then just wait for the bus. There's nothing more awkward than waiting for the bus with someone you don't know after you talk to them. Because now you can't leave, you've already had and established a conversation, so you know them, they're not strangers. But you also aren't talking. You know how weird it is? It's about as weird as a brown man with a candy cane on his head and not explaining why. Someone say something. Tell her who you're actually picking up. That'll save her the trip. Who are you picking up? Seriously, bro. Answer a quick. When someone asks you something, you can't just stare at them like the megalomaniac that you are. You sociopath. L. I'm so sorry. I. Ivan, I'll be waiting in my truck around the corner whenever you're ready. Hey, yo, Ivan, when you're ready, when you're done with that bitch, I got 50 bucks and I, I will do anything. Anything. Christmas special, baby. It'll be an XXXmas. Pastor Chris doesn't know that Bobby and Allison broke up because it just happened. The only people who knew that are the only two people in the diner that were with Bobby and Allison at the time. So him seeing Ivan and Allison making out should have been like a red light in his head and he should have been like, what are you doing? You're getting married. But he was just like, bro, let me get in on that action once you're done in the car, in the back of my truck in the back of my ute. We, there's enough for three of us. Anyway, like a while later, they decide to get married and Ivan pops the question. Allison Grant, will you be my wife? Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's go tell the family. Let's go tell the family. Let's go tell the family. He sounds like a kid who's speaking too fast. Let's go to the family. I don't know why he whispers like that. He sounds way stupid though when he whispers. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not boast, it's not proud, it is not self-seeking, does not dishonor others, keeps no record of wrong. Love is not blind, love is not proud, love is not warm, love is not welcoming, love is not when your wife fucks another man. Love is not when Saint Nick gives her the Saint Dick. <laughs> Do you take this man to be a wife? I mean your husband, I don't care. Do you promise you love to keep, to hold each other till you're fast asleep? Bobby showed up to the wedding? <laughs> Oh, Bobby's a stand-up dude. This dude got rejected after trying to marry her and still showed up to the wedding. I don't, I don't even think he has family there. This is just some random people there. Then they marry each other and it's a beautiful moment. And then it's not a beautiful moment because in their own marriage, they decide to get out of there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Wait. Yes, I remember. 
<laughs> yes, I always remember. It's the royalty-free one you always like, and I'm like, it did it, but I just replay it anyway. Um, and then after they get married, they pinky promise. That's better than marriage is a pinky promise, and uh, the movie ends. That's that's how it ends. They started the same way they ended, the same age. I don't know. How do you feel about the movie? Did you like it? It's it's a movie that is from Hallmark. Hallmark seems to not really write scripts. I think they improvise the whole movie. The budget of this movie is I don't know. The net gross of this movie I know even less about. But I'll tell you one thing I do know about the movie. Do you think the chemistry of the actors was good or do you think they were just acting? Just acting, right? Two cardboard actors that were paid to fall in love. Well, you're wrong. The two actors actually fell in love. They really fell in love. And that is some of the cutest shit ever. I actually found an article. Love on the silver screen led to the real thing for these local actors. They got engaged and married. And it's amazing. But it's not amazing because they broke up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I actually wanted to interview these people because I was like, oh man, wouldn't that be cool? A Hallmark movie that actually brought people together, even if the movie sucked. And I guess it's still a special moment, but it's kind of sad that they're not together. But even though I can't interview them, I did actually want to interview the director of this movie. So if it's something that you want to see, leave a comment down below. Let me know. And maybe I will actually message him because I do follow him now on Instagram. And I think maybe he might say yes, even though I trashed his movie. Uh, all in all, Christmas Coupon is a movie about, I guess, falling in love for the holidays. It's supposed to be a nice homely movie. And although it is very, very bad technically, I think it's a good movie because it has a lot of heart. Obviously, everyone on set seems to be happy having fun. It's a wholesome movie. It doesn't offend anyone. And mostly, if you watch it in a group with other people and just have fun, I think you enjoy this movie. I certainly did. And I watched it with some friends and I think it was genuinely a good experience. So as someone who loves movies with a passion, I think at the end of the day, a successful movie doesn't just have to be technically correct. If it brings an audience together and makes them evoke an emotion and leaves them feeling a certain type of way when they leave the movie, I think you can consider that a success. And in that regard, I think the director and everyone else on this project has done well. So I'd like to give them a little round of applause. Thank you for making this Christmas that much more fun. I hope everyone on the set there has a good Christmas. And I hope you watching and everyone else has a great one as well. If I have one Christmas wish, it is to be on a Hallmark movie of my own. Hallmark, if you're watching me and you know about my YouTube channel, call me. But I need an answer now. Main part only. I want to be a main actor in your shitty movies. I want you to know that I know they're shitty and we'll make a shitty movie all around, but it will be so good. It'll be called Holiday Hell. Shit, that's actually a movie name. It'll be called Christmas Craigslist. A brown man who just moves to America goes on Craigslist and finds the house of his dreams and also finds a girl who's searching for the same ad. They become roommates and fall in love for the holidays, but it turns out she's from India and their parents know each other. Are they cousins? We'll find out. Great movie plot. Anyway, I'm out of here. Oh. Feliz Navidad, prospero año y felicidad. One night, baby, is on the body on court. Two tone, maybe I'm born just like a downpour. Three more baddies are coming to you. Get insecure. Four, five, on me if you walk out the door. Relax your mind.